Frankfurt, Germany. This is a 174-ton gas generator. It's needed for a power plant in landlocked Armenia. There's no way it can go by land. The roads to its destination just aren't flat enough, straight enough, or smooth enough. They will have to fly it, but no airplane has ever carried a load this heavy. It will take a record-breaking plane to attempt this extraordinary record-breaking lift. Antonov, the Antonov 225, the largest aircraft ever built. Wingspan, 88 meters. Maximum payload, 250 tons. Six turbofan jets, each churning out 230 kilonewtons of thrust. That's double the thrust of Concorde. Maximum takeoff weight, 640 tons. Top speed, 850 kilometers per hour. First flown in 1988, this gigantic plane was designed to carry the Soviet space shuttle. But the cargo it's about to take on is more than twice the weight of the space shuttle. Antonov. The undisputed heavyweight champion of the sky. Crew, technical director Viktor Zarzhinai. Confident Antonov can do it. Flight manager John Golovnev is more cautious. Thomas Bauman, logistics engineer. He's designed a special rig to hold the heaviest ever bit of air cargo. It's the heaviest single piece ever transported by air so far. Значит, такого груза ещё самолёт воздух не поднимал, ни один самолёт в мире. И никто не поднимет кроме нас. 15:04 p.m. Frankfurt Airport is fogbound. Antonov's departure from Kiev has been delayed by over two hours. Finally, at 16.04, Antonov drops out of the clouds. It's been worth the wait. This is an awe-inspiring sight. Antonov is so enormous, it needs 2,400 meters of runway to come to a halt. The largest undercarriage in aviation history touches down. Antonov's six huge engines are thrown into reverse thrust. Eleven meters longer and nine meters wider than an Airbus A380, Antonov towers over its puny escort vehicles. The crew in the cockpit sits 15 meters above the ground. It's got 32 wheels, a ridiculous amount of rubber, but that's what you need to carry 640 tons of aircraft. Finally, she comes to rest, filling up most of the cargo apron. 1704, the whole front of the plane starts to move. Antonov's monster cargo door slowly raises up. The door alone weighs one and a half tons. As it opens, it reveals Antonov's cavernous 1,200 cubic meter cargo hold, big enough to take the entire fuselage of a 737 passenger jet. To help take on board massive loads, the front of the aircraft drops down to the ground. The front wheels fold back into the fuselage, and the weight of Antonov comes down to rest on two hydraulic telescopic legs. Now they can drop the articulated cargo rack. Antonov, 
is open for business. And now all eyes are on Thomas Bauman. We, we, we could spend it like here, mm -hmm. and then maybe spend it somewhere here on the okay. rushing ice. He's designed a special frame on which the super heavy generator will be carried. The generator doesn't look so big, but with its frame, it weighs 190 tons. This thing is heavier than a Boeing 747 and is only slightly lighter than the Statue of Liberty. The aircraft is not capable to take such a concentrated load. Bauman's long steel frame is designed to spread the load over a bigger area of the cargo deck. In flight, Bauman's monster will be chained down like King Kong. An unsecured load this size would make Antonov impossible to control, tipping her over and pulling her out of the sky. If it were to break its chains, it could tear a hole in the fuselage. Without the frame, you're gonna damage the aircraft, so you, you basically damage the structural integrity of the aircraft. The ground crew assembles a ramp running from the cargo apron to the belly of Antonov. Because the load is so massive, they're making the ramp extra long to make the gradient less steep. But Bauman is anxious about what will happen when the huge weight of the generator comes to rest on the ramp. We have to do very carefully, because otherwise we're gonna destroy these sections here, which are all made of aluminum. It's the moment of truth. Everything depends on these lightweight racks. There is no plan B. If the sections break, there is simply no other way to get this humongous load onto Antonov. And this mission will have failed before it's begun. Position, South Africa. This is one of the largest iron ore mines on Earth. Its processing plant is the size of a small town. The constant stream of iron ore from the plant is carried off in these extraordinary freight trains. Each train is four kilometers long and has 360 wagons. These are some of the longest trains in the world. To feed the plant with iron ore, miners are opening up a new section of the mine. Ian, feed. They are blasting massive bits off the side of Kumba Mountain. Each 17 tons of explosive unearths another 60,000 tons of iron ore. But the ore is buried under 40,000 tons of topsoil and rubble. Len Ocamp urgently needs to shift the rubble out of the way. I'm on a lot of pressure at the moment. At the moment, it looks quite dicey. If he doesn't do it within 10 hours, the supply of iron ore to the plant will be cut, and this giant operation will grind to a halt. To move 40,000 tons in 10 hours, Ocamp needs a miracle. Luckily, he's got three. The Behemoths, the Liebherr T-282. Height, 7.4 meters. Maximum load, 360 tons. Cost, 4 million US dollars a piece. Part off-roader, part apartment block, Behemoth can move a mountain in one load. George Baranye drives one. It's like a house, but it's bigger than a house. John Abu Bak drives another. I rather drive this truck than a Ferrari. And mine boss Len Ocamp must make sure the behemoths get the job done. I'm on top of the people the whole time. Seven a.m. The Sishin mine, 
South Africa. Today, there's a mountain to climb. Mining is dangerous work, and safety is paramount. Ocamp needs his crew to be careful as well as productive. We're behind schedule for the month. Everybody knows it. I want 40,000 tons from this shift today. OK. Engineers Rudy de Plessis and Ardi van Niekerk keep the three behemoths in shape. It takes 4,700 litres of diesel to fill them up. The fuel consumption of this engine is more or less 168 litres of diesel per hour at full horsepower. To move 100 metres, Beermuth swallows one litre of diesel. Its thirsty engine is massive. Quite big, you can see. I'm sitting on top of it. It's about the size of a family car. The truck's ready to go, and I'm going to get the operator. I want to get this truck in the mine. It's got to throw production now. This is the biggest day of the year for Ocam. The whole mine is relying on him to shift 40,000 tons of soil and rock in just 10 hours. Without Beermuth, he wouldn't stand a chance. John Abu Bak, the driver, is raring to go. This engine is 100 times bigger than my car. I like to go fast. Fully loaded, this truck carries 360 tons, and it's no milk float. The top speed of this truck is 40 kilometers per hour. When it's empty, it drives faster. Waiting for the monster trucks at the blast zone are two other giants of the mining world. Hitachi's massive hydraulic excavator, which can lift 40 tons in one mouthful. And the Komatsu 206T WA1203, AKA the Mountain Mover. The biggest front end loader in the world. The scale is unbelievable. One and a half army Humvees could fit comfortably in Mountain Mover's mouth. But both of these gigantic beasts are dwarfed by Birma. George Baranye's truck is the first to be loaded. I have to wait until the truck is full. The 40,000 tons of topsoil must be dumped in a landfill site on the other side of the pit. I'm going to drop the, the load off. Beermuth's field of vision is limited. The driver's seat is set back from the front of the truck. Baronye cannot see anything below him, behind him, or to the sides. There is uh, a spotter in front of me which shows me in which direction I should go. If the spotter fell in the path of Beermuth, Baronye would not see him. If the spotter was crushed beneath one of Beermuth's wheels, Baranye would not feel it. So I have to be careful, careful. Now Beermuth has to reverse to the edge of a 200-meter cliff. Baranye has to rely on video cameras. Without the camera, I cannot see if something is happening at the back of the truck. It's a hazardous maneuver. In order to dump its load, Beermuth's bucket must be hanging over the lip of the cliff. If Baranye makes one wrong move, he and Beermuth will fall over the edge. It takes Beermuth just 25 seconds to dump 360 tons. But one of the spotters spots a problem. I, I've got a punch on my tire number six. OK, I'm on my way there. Ocamp is called immediately. We just had one of our big lever trucks blown a right front tire. I want to rush back to the site as soon as possible. Changing a Beermuth tire is a major operation. It's a big problem. The engineer just informed me we've got some studs broken there on the tire, so we need to get it back to the shop and get it changed. 
the behemoth could be out for hours. If that happens, Ocamp won't get the topsoil moved in time, and one of the largest iron mines in the world could grind to a halt. Antwerp, Belgium. On the banks of Europe's second largest seaport, construction of one of the largest jack-up ships in the world, Goliath, has just been completed. Goliath is urgently needed offshore for heavy-duty building projects. Every day this 2,400-ton barge stays on land, it's costing its owner, Anthony Provost, 100,000 euros. But launching this incredible hulk will take the Herculean powers of one very special machine.